Hello and welcome to Only Connect. We're on a mainstream channel these days, but we're as intellectually demanding as ever. I should probably say, to be fair, that in many walks of life, our question setters aren't nearly so rigorous. They're very relaxed, for example, when it comes to fashion rules or personal hygiene, but they won't give an inch on the questions, which I know will come as a welcome challenge to tonight's teams. Who are, on my right, Richard Clay, a Cambridge maths graduate and amateur musician who once caused a traffic pile-up in London which included the Queen. Vince Milner, a civil servant who's writing a crossword-solving computer programme and once played a little maid in the Mikado. And their captain, Mike Hart, a maths graduate with a diploma in careers guidance who owns 150 Doctor Who books and whose cousin was a 1970s pop star. United by a weakness for the written word, they are the bibliophiles. Mike, you won your first seat against the QI Elves and lost to the Nordophiles. How was the wall in your last seat? Well, um, as you might remember, we had a uh, we didn't get the One Direction, so we've been brushing up on that by listening to some of their LPs on our music centre. Yes, I'm terribly sorry about that. I got the giggles for the first time in nearly ten series, only because you were being so clever. There they all were, and you were saying, well, of course, there's there's Thomas Paine, the great political writer, there's Art Malik, Terence Malik, and then when I came to you, you said, are they golfers? <laughs> <laughs> just one direction, just miles outside your frame of reference. Yeah. Well, good luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you. You are facing, on my left, Philip Drnovcek Zorko, a Cambridge University student who has lived in five different countries and come face to face with the world's most venomous snake. James Robson, a trainee teacher who enjoys role-playing, modern board games and recreational mathematics and their captain, Frederick Heath Wren, a software developer and pop music obsessive who was recently attacked by a squirrel in St James's Park. United by a vim for video gaming, they are the Games Masters. Frederick, you won your first seat against the Coders, then lost to the Orienteers. What have you got planned for victory tonight? Well, we've been entering cheat codes in the dressing room. So we've got infinite lives, we can glitch through the walls, and if things get tough, we activate giant head mode. I literally have no idea what you just said, <laughs> but it sounds good, so good luck. We'll start with round one. Games Masters, you won the toss, so you'll be going first. Please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. Uh, Horned Viper. Coming face to face with the world's most venomous snake again. These are going to be picture clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Oh, oh, so that's that's a painting wow. Wow. Oh, um, I think we need the next yeah, one. Next. next. That's the band Wham. Jeez, it Wham. Um, it must be. It can't it, be because it's, it's Wham in both. That's oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. The next. Next. Um, 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 it's a sitcom set in Occupied Farms. Yeah. Um, um, I guess what was the connection between it? Next. next. Oh, so it's just oh, exclamation marks, marks, I think. Do they all end with exclamation marks? We have removed exclamation marks from all of these pictures. You would expect to see an exclamation mark on the T-shirts of the band Wham, on the credits of Allo Allo, and the sign for Westwood Ho in Devon. What's that first clue? Uh, it's the painting Wham by Roy Lichtenstein. That's absolutely right, in the Tate Modern. And it has an exclamation mark that we have removed on a computer. We have not broken in at night and removed it, although such is our commitment to the quiz. We might. Well done for a point. Bibliophiles, what would you like? Uh, lion, please. Lion. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next. Next. Ballard, the writer. Oh, eight. Do you know what writer? Oh, eighteen. No. Next. Um, different kinds of government bonds. They're all government bonds, yes. Gilt is the local one, Bunt in Germany. JGB, do you know what that stands for? JG Ballard. <laughs> Have another go. Something government bond? <laughs> Japanese, Japanese government bonds, exactly so. And OAT is Obligation Assimilable du Trésor in France. All types of government bond. 
Games Masters, what next? Uh, Eye of Horus. Eye of Horus. Ah, the happy chord that indicates music. What is the connection between these musical clues? Here's the first. Any ideas? It's familiar, but I say that about every piece of classical music ever recorded. Next, please. Please. Oh, it's Prince Charming by Adam the Ants. So do we think it's royalty or do we think it's animals? Uh, what do we hang on? What do we think is more likely to be first to Royalty, I think. I mean, Three seconds. Is it royalty? I'm afraid it is not. Oh. So there is a bonus chance of the bibliophiles if you know the answer. Insects? Not it. I think you all recognise Prince Charming by Adam and the Ants. First one, Prokofiev's The Fairy Godmother. Then it was Buttons oh. by the Pussycat Dolls featuring Snoop Dogg. And the third one, Cinderella Rockefeller. Oh, just from Cinderella. All from Cinderella. All Cinderella, that was the connection. Yeah. So no bonus points to you, Bibliophiles, but you may choose a question. Twisted Flax, please. The Twisted Flax. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next. Next. Some of the Prime Minister, some of the Margaret, Victoria. Next. They want all cesareans. All cesarean birth births. That's absolutely right. All born by Caesarean section. Macduff, the giveaway there. He was untimely ripped from his mother's womb. And also referred to as not of woman born. I don't like that. It's a bit harsh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> a bit harsh. I wonder what his mum thought about that. I think it's supposed to be a riddle, but if that was a question on this show, I think the verifiers <laughs> would be saying, now, come on, don't think you can get away with that. But that's right. Caesarean section is the connection. Games Masters, your turn. Two reads. Two reads. What's the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Seconds. Is that a really short film? Next. Oh. Sword fights. The length of them because there's. Yeah, 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 I mean, do we want to go for next just to be sure, or, I mean, I feel like it's a Next. Um, kisses. There's a really long kiss. Yes. Uh, is it the length of kisses? It is not. No. Bibliophiles, do you know the answer? The amount cut by censors. That's what it is. I heard you muttering about sword fights. I mean, frankly... Not enough of a sword fight in Last Tango in Paris. <laughs> the combination of swords fights, kisses, it's things that were cut by the BBFC and it's the length of time of the cuts they made from those films. Do you want to hear the note that the BBFC put in about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Go on. When they were cutting 66 seconds. It's rather lovely. This is the BBFC note. There can be few films to which members of the BBFC looked forward with more pleasure than the sequel to Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> It is thus with real sadness, indeed bordering on despondency, <laughs> that we found ourselves unanimously confronted with the realisation that the film cannot be considered for a junior audience without cuts. Isn't that lovely? A real fan. A real <laughs> fan. They felt terrible about having to cut it, but they considered it too violent for youngsters. So well done, you get the bonus that time, and you'll get the last question of the round, water. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next. Next. They all had the same name. Right. I'm sure I've heard the name of it. No, we've probably just all had the same name. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to go in? Next. Oh, they're all called Bruce. So they all have the same name. Yeah. They all have the same name. They all have the same name. Can you tell me more about any of those clues? Well, we have the Bruce's, which I guess is a Monty Python thing. 
It is a Monty Python thing at the University of Woolloomooloo. There it's is a place, a real place. called. Yeah. It, well, there's a real place called Woolloomooloo ah. in Australia, and they call it Woolloomooloo. And I'm not quite sure whether that's a mistake or it's a slightly yeah. satirical version. Yeah. But they're all called Bruce. What about the others? Well, the, I, it's annoying. I can't remember the names of the yachts by Edward Heath, but I know that was the thing I remembered that they were all the same. And it's just escaped me. Something musical, and it's just. Yeah, Ted Heath called all his five yachts Morning Cloud. Okay, Morning Cloud. I mean. I like to give all my yachts different names, I don't know about you, but <laughs> morning time. What about George Foreman's sons? They're all George. Yeah, they're all called George Foreman. Yes, he, he said, if you're going to get hit as many times as I've been hit by Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, you're not going to remember many names. <laughs> so they're all called George. And the kings of the Ptolemaic dynasty, of course, all called Ptolemy. So very well done. At the end of round one, the games masters have one point, the bibliophiles have four. On to round two, the sequences round. So, for example, we'd had that George Foreman question. You might have seen George, George, George. And I want to hear the answer. George. Games Masters, you'll be going first again. What would you like? Water. Water. OK. I'd like to know what would come forth in this picture sequence. Here's the first. No clue who is. Next. Oh. Next. Oh, well, well, there are three people. <laughs> um, is the next one also a person? Probably, yeah, yes. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a little too unspecific. Uh, name a person. Um, John Smith. John Smith. A picture of John Smith. And why would that be? I honestly have no idea. Because we agreed if we didn't know an answer was a person, we'd guess John Smith. That's quite a good guess, because there are a few well-known people called John Smith who might come up in a quiz. Not in this case, though. Bibliophiles, do you know? And because it's a bonus, I need a specific answer. A picture of Jonathan Ross. Uh, and why would that be? Well, we, we were speculating that the penultimate picture was Russell Brand. I don't think it is, but that's the closest <laughs> we've got. No, it really isn't. No, I guess not, but... Now, here's the thing. I unwittingly gave you an extra clue. I wasn't expecting this with that George, George and George. This is to do with children. None of you recognised in that first picture Julian Lennon. Uh, the gentleman in the second picture, you will surely agree, bears a remarkable resemblance to Paul McCartney. That is James McCartney. Oh, is that Danny the third Harrison? fellow, it is Danny Harrison. So I wanted to hear Zach Starkey. They are the sons of John, Paul, George and Ringo. And uh, I think the verifiers have just done a quick check and Jonathan Ross is not believed sure? to be... I a son DNA test. of Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to write in later with your <laughs> DNA evidence. So no points there. Bibliophiles, what would you like? Um, Horned Viper, please. The Viper. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Oh, that's... Oh, it's the... It's the, it's the, it's the reading and publication order of the books. Yes. Yeah. So it's the next. Well, which way is it going? Which way? Next? Yeah, next. Okay. So it's, so it's the first. It's first and second um, language in the world. First and second language in the world. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. First, then second, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. A perfect answer for three points. Can you explain why? I'm going to let Vince explain this. So the Narnia books have a reading order which is different from the order in which they were published. So the first published was um, The Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe, but then there was a prequel, Magician's Nephew, so that pushed it forward in the reading order. Well, it did, so that went into second place, but why have the others all gone forward by two rather than three? Horsen. So it's Horse and His Boy as well was a later one, which kind of mucks the order up. That's right, so they all moved forward one place, then in came the Horse and His Boy after The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and it moved forward too, and this was very confusing. It's been debated for a very long time, although C.S. Lewis himself wrote in a letter, perhaps it doesn't matter very much in which order anyone reads them. Very well done. Games Masters, what would you like? Lion. Lion. What would be the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. I think it may have been. Yeah. Next. Oh, well, there's um, four A's in BAFTA awards. There's four A's in the extra levels. So there's four I's in this case. Yeah, okay, so so four A's. A's. Uh, Boogaloo. Um, o O. Uh, yeah, that's four O's. Hang on. Are you sure? Yeah, just, say, just say a word with four O's in it. 
a word with four O's in it. Well, that's right. It doesn't need to be four O's, although we've got four O's in our example. Whoop, whoop. Only O's is the thing, because there are only A's in BAFTA awards, only E's in the extra levels, which were invented by our question editor, by the way. The Somerset levels are the ones that flooded I's in Mississippi, so A-E-I-O, something with only O's, for example, whoop, whoop, which is an Aboriginal term for a small town, or perhaps the sound the police makes. Bibliophiles, what would you like? Twisted flax, please. Twisted flax. <laughs> It's a music sequence. We have those from time to time, this series. So I would like to know what sort of piece of music you'd expect to come forth. Here's the first clue. And that, that old, old tree that I used to play on. Pretty aggressive home, isn't it? Down Next. The when are you going to come down? When are you going to come down? Next. Oh, it's orange crush. And green, yellow, orange. Yeah, that's, that's, um, is that a rainbow? Yeah, it's red. It's not a song red. The Lady in Red. Exactly right. And why would that be? Richard, do you want to? Uh, I think they're um, songs with colours of the rainbow, I guess, so uh, working, so Lady in Red, uh, Orange Crush, um, Yellow, something with yellow. Backwards, I forgot what it was. That's right, they're spectrum colours in the titles of songs, and rather nastily, we're going backwards. So we heard Green Green Grass of Home, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, and Orange Crush. We couldn't hear Lady in Red because. That was the answer, but I think we could. Well, we could have a snatch of it now. Could we? Could have a go with the chorus. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Dancing with me. Absolutely, I thought that was beautiful. Could beautiful. Be there. Yeah. Very nice. Just us. Just us, Mike. I enjoyed it. Games masters, your choice. Two reads. Two reads. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Roddy. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Arthur. <laughs> the Rod Laver Arena is where the Australian Open is played. It's the first of the Grand Slams in the year. Next. Well, ne next. Yeah, next. Yes, it is. Um, Arthur Ashe, I'm almost certain, is where the US Open is played. OK. Arthur Ashe? You could have come in after one clue. The answer is Arthur Ashe. Brilliantly done. Philip, perhaps you could talk us through it. Um, they are the named... The arenas in which the finals of the four Grand Slams are played in are named after these things. Wimbledon, rather boringly, is just centre court, and the others are all famous people. They are the principal courts at tennis Grand Slams, and we're going chronologically. The Rod Laver Arena is where the Australian Open is played. Philippe Chatrier Court for the French Open. Centre court, perhaps one day Murray Court at Wimbledon, and for the US Open, they named their stadium after the great tennis hero, Arthur Ashe. Very well done. Bibliophiles, the last question of the round. The Eye of Horus is looking at you. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. This is East Enders. This is the same character. Got married. Yeah. Got married again. Yeah. Do you know? Next. Mrs. Watts. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So there's a bonus chance for the Games Masters. Miss Smith. Mrs. Smith. <laughs> well, Mrs. John Smith. Not the answer, I'm afraid. You were closer, Bibliophiles. What were you thinking of? Well, we thought it was a character from EastEnders and their names as they've gone through and they've married and so on and so forth, but we can't grasp the name. It is a character from EastEnders, but one who has never married to Den Watts. It is Pat, who was born Pat Harris. She married Pete Beale to become Mrs. Beale. She married Brian Wicks to become Mrs. Wicks and was finally Mrs. Butcher oh, when she it. married Frank Butcher, played by the great Mike Reed. Pat, Pat, Pat. That was her butcher years. <laughs> I'm sure I brought them all back for you there. <laughs> and at the end of round two, the Games Masters have six points, the Bibliophiles have nine. <laughs> now for the connecting wall, 16 jumbled up clues that hide four connected groups of four. But can the teams find them? You'll be going first. Bibliophiles, would you like lion or water? Lion, please. Lion. 
You've got two and a half minutes to solve this wall, starting now. This is US um, Department, Department of Engineering, something other, the, the IRS, the IRS, the IRS, the CIA, there may be another one. Wow, three you strikes, you've got lots of time. Bacon and jelly, sandwich. Bacon, bacon, listen, tomato. Jam on. Yeah, so what are these other Ruben's things? Ruben's a sandwich. Ooh. So, Karina, liar, liar, uh, you, oh gosh. Karina, Karina. Karina, Karina, liar, liar, liar. Jam on, jam on is a film. Ruben, Ruben. Ruben, Ruben, sounds like it must be it. Can't it must be a sandwich. Yeah. Did you go for it? Yeah. yeah. So, just because, I said liar, liar, Karina, Karina is a film, isn't it? Yeah. And Ruben, Ruben. Very impressive. Solve the wall. I barely had time to look at the cards. I don't even know the answers myself. <laughs> Let's see if you do. Four points, of course, for the groups you found. What about that first blue group starting Saraband or Sarabandi? What's that? Uh, they are types of dance. Can you be any more specific? Spanish. I will accept Spanish. types of dance. Spanish dance. Spanish dances, yes. Are you dancers, any of you? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. And the green group starting D or DEA? They are um, US yes. government departments abbreviated. They are American government agencies. Can you tell me their full names? Well, DEA is Drug Enforcement Agency, Agency. CIA is... Drug British. Enforcement Administration. Mm. <laughs> okay. IRS is the in, like, yeah, Internal Revenue, Revenue, Revenue Service. Service. Internal, Internal Revenue Service, Service. <laughs> yes. Central Intelligence Agency. Yeah. Yes. ATF. Alcohol, Alcohol tobacco, tobacco and firearms. Oh. Yes, it's a slightly confusing uh, title. They've made it nice and short, but it's actually Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosive. Just in case that wasn't covered by everything else. So that's right. And what about the next one? Hamon or Jamon or any other way I can think of to pronounce it? To uh, if you repeat the word in each case, you get a film name. Well, that's right. Hamon, Hamon, directed by Bigath Luna. Karina, Karina. Do you know who's in that film? No. Ray Liotta and Whoopi Goldberg are the stars. Liar, Liar is the Jim Carrey vehicle. And Reuben, Reuben. Do you know who's in that? Is that Tom Conti? It is Tom Conti playing a drunken poet. My favourite sort of poet. <laughs> so that's that one. And what about the last group? Bult. Or BLT and the rest of them? Uh, they're all types of sandwich. They're simply types of sandwich. So, that is four points for the groups you found, four points for the connections. I'll give you a bonus of two for getting it all right. That's the maximum of ten. Very well done. Time to bring back the Games Masters and offer them the game of connecting walls. Sixteen new clues, all jumbled up, still need sorting into four groups of four. It'll be the water wall for you, the lion's gone. You have two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. Uh, yeah. beaches, beaches. Oh, Beaches, yeah. Okay, so it's Omaha right. Sword, Utah Juno, oh, and Gold, like all of those. Um, oh, tarot magic, suit. Magic 8 Ball, Magic Roundabout. Yes. So, so magic, magic Carpet 8 Ball, Roundabout, wand? Lantern, yes. Wand, yes. Wand is also, wand is also Tarot so, Suit. Yes, it's Wands, Cups, Swords, and, and Pentacles. So, actually, let's just do that. So, yeah, okay, do, okay. The, do the magic. Yeah. And then what have we got left? Kyoto, Galileo. Three strikes Zeta. now, lots of time. So, so it's, it'll be cups of one pentacles, and then we've got Kyoto, Galileo, Dawn, are Rosetta. They, are they, um, Dawn Treader, uh, Dawn. Are they probes or some sort of space probes? Oh, that oh, could possible. be possible. Yes. Okay. Because it's pen pentacle, one sword, and cup of the tower. Okay. What's so, Kyoto? I, mean, I think Galileo. That Galileo definitely is. Yes. Is I Dawn think Rosetta is. is. Okay, yeah. so we say probes. Okay, so the only Rosetta be... is going to be stone or... There's a Dawn stone in Pokemon, so <laughs> that's probably not it. No, yes. Uh, uh, there's a Galileo stone anyway. Yeah, no. I don't know what that Rosetta is. Rosetta is like a language learning thing, that's probably not going to be a... No. Um, um, so, so, stone it, it, anyway. Do you, do you I, think I, I think it is It's entirely possible that Rosetta is. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's not just Galileo that's making things like that, I think. Yeah. So, should right, we go should for we, it? Well, let's try the tarot suits then, if it's not that. Well, it must be, surely. No, it's best to go. Oops. Two goes now. And that's it. You've solved the wall with a minute to spare. Very well done. So that's four points for the groups you found. What about the connections? Gold, Utah, Juno, Omaha. So they're D-Day beaches. Yes. D-Day D beaches. They are code names of beaches in the D-Day landings. I'm impressed you know that. Did you learn about that at school? It was a... Yeah, that I can recall. yeah and also you, there's the famous uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, is it that? I was in the early experimental years of GCSE, which all the questions were things like, but how would it have felt to be an Elizabethan <laughs> peasant? No idea about the D-Day landing beaches at all. Well done, you get that point. What about the next green group starting carpet? Uh, they can all be preceded by the word magic. Yes, they can. Magic carpet, magic roundabout, magic eight ball, magic lantern. And the pink group, cup, pentacle, sword, wand. So they're suits in a tarot deck. 
Suits in the tarot. Don't predict the future either. And the final group starting Galileo. What's that? We think space yeah, probes. I think it's... Are they space probes? They are space probes. Which ones didn't you know? Um, uh, Dawn. Giotto, I think. I mean, I knew Galileo was one. I was fairly sure Rosetta was one. And Dawn sounds like it could be. Yes, that so... one was visiting an asteroid and a dwarf planet. Oh, yes, I remember that. Giotto, oh, sorry, it flew by think. two comets, including mm. Halley's Comet. Although when I was at school, they said we ought to pronounce it Hawley. It's probably wrong. I mean, that's how I left school. <laughs> how does it feel to be a peasant and you should say Hawley? I'm sure you don't. <laughs> Flew by the comets. But all of them, yes, space probes. Excellent. So, well done. That is four points for the groups you found, four more points for the connections. A bonus of two for getting it all right. That is the maximum of ten. Let's have a look at the scores. The games Masters have 16 points. The Bibliophiles have 19. So this will be decided by the Missing Vowels round. We've taken well-known names, phrases and sayings, we've taken out the vowels and we've re-spaced the consonants. And the teams must decipher those disguised clues. They will come in connected groups of four, but I'll tell the teams the connections up front. And this time I will take a point away for any mistakes, even a single letter. So be careful. Fingers on buzzers teams. The first group are all highs and lows. Bibliophiles. No, sorry. No, Games Masters, do you know? Too long, it's penthouse and basement. Games Masters? No. No, Bibliophiles, do you know? Elation and depression. Is correct. Don't know this one, it's fifth and first gear. Files. Mount Everest and Mariana's Trench. Correct. Next category. Terms invented by Lewis Carroll in Jabberwocky. Games Masters. Brilliant. Correct. Games Masters. The Freemius Bandersnatch. Yes, it is. Games Masters. Kalu Calais. Yep. Games Masters. Shortled. You obviously know that poem. Well done. Next category. Two football teams from the same city. Games Masters. Everton and Liverpool. Correct. Games Masters. Arsenal and Chelsea. Correct. Games Masters. Espanol and Barcelona. That is correct. The bell has gone for the end of the quiz. And after a very dramatic round four, the winners with 22 points and through to the quarterfinals are the Games Masters. And after an otherwise brilliant competition, finishing an honourable second with 20 points, it's the Bibliophiles. I'm very sorry. I, Jamberwocky and football teams seem to just <laughs> yeah. hit the buzzer of the other team. That's the way it goes. But you've been fantastic. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry Enjoy to say goodbye. So the Games Masters see their destiny written in the stars. The Bibliophiles is written in chalk. Ours is written in the Radio Times. So we'll see you again when they say we can. Goodbye.